Hi again everyone, it's Michael Volchinovich here from Vibrant Shot. Um, today we're going to be diving into the exciting world of color adjustments in Photoshop. So um, the main reason I wanted to make this video is that I think a lot of people aren't aware of the you know sort of myriad of ways that uh, Photoshop allows you to adjust the color within your images. And oftentimes I see a lot of people just relying on the sort of you know pre-built action packs that are out there and just kind of using the same color sets over and over again. So today we're going to cover some of the uh, main ways. Like I said, there's there's tons of different ways of doing it, but we're going to cover uh, probably six or so different ways that I uh, typically use. Um, to make adjustments within, uh, you know, portrait images, architecture images, um, it works for pretty much anything. So we're going to get started off with um, using some of these adjustment layers that we have over here, and uh, we're actually going to start with uh, the one I think that confuses people the most, which is the curves adjustment. So with the curves adjustment, uh, you know, most people tend to uh, just use curves to adjust, you know, midtones, highlights, shadows, but uh, rather than uh, operating on the RGB. Um, uh, side of things here, we're going to actually go in and select the individual color channel that we want to operate on. So um, essentially we've got our RGB channels over here and if we just go into blue, um, I think the uh, important thing to understand here is actually what's going on when we start modifying this curve within a specific color channel. So basically what ends up happening is um, if we uh, start manipulating this corner over here, we're going to be adjusting um, obviously our highlights and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, shuffling between two different colors, which is going to be blue and yellow because blue and yellow are opposites. So um, if we start dragging over here, we see that we're now adding a little bit more blue into our highlights and if we drag down, we're going to start adding more uh, yellows within our highlights. And similarly, uh, on the shadow side of things, uh, we can do the same thing. If we start dragging upwards, we see that we're starting to introduce some more blue, um, sort of a blue color cast into our shadows. And if we drag across, uh, we're going to start getting more yellow in our shadows. So, you know, a very typical adjustment that you'll see a lot in fashion images is, you know, where you sort of bring up the, the amount of blue within um, within our shadows, and then we, uh, we bring down um, the uh, the highlight adjuster here, so we give it a little bit more uh, yellow within the skin tones. In this case, you know our skin tones are our highlights, and uh, you know ultimately very quick adjustment, and it creates a pretty nice uh, pleasing effect within our image. So the same thing actually works within uh, every one of the channels. It's the you know, same concept. Um, within red, uh, we're, we're modifying red and cyan. Uh, within green, we're uh, modifying green and magenta, and you know, as I just said, blue is, is blue and yellow adjustment. So um, that's uh, that's one that I often use, and obviously you can start experimenting with this, playing around with uh, with the mid tones, and just modifying the curve to your heart's content, and uh, finding something that works nicely for you. Now uh, we'll move on to the next adjustment, which is going to be our levels adjustment, and effectively levels and curves are, are pretty much doing the same thing, except with a slightly different interface. So once again, we're going to get out of our RGB adjustment um, uh, channel here. We're just going to go right into the individual one. So I'm just going to pick blue again, so that we can uh, compare directly to you know how things look. Uh, when we actually operate on curves. So uh, if we we see here that we no longer can go sort of up and down like we uh, could with uh, the levels, we're really kind of uh, you know reduced to sliding um, one way within the shadows, um, one way within the highlights, and, and that's really all we have. So if we start adjusting the highlights here, we see that we're introducing more blue into the highlights. And if we start adjusting um, towards the right-hand side on the shadows, we're introducing more orange, or, or I should say yellow, into uh, into our shadows here. So if we want to go in the opposite direction, that is where the output level slider actually comes into play. And here, if we start dragging this towards the left, we see the, the highlights start to go towards yellow again, just like we did with our, um, our curves adjustment. Same story goes for uh, the shadow side of things. If we start bringing that towards the right, we're now introducing again more blues into our shadows. So the end result of that is pretty much the same, except we're using a slightly different interface. And of course, um, we can modify on the midtone level as well. Um, if we go this way, we start to introduce again a little bit more uh, blue within the midtones. And if we go towards the right, um, we start introducing a little bit more yellow um, within the midtones. So, like I said, pretty much the exact same effect. The only difference is um, the interface is different, and ultimately uh, your choice of one or the other depends on what you're more comfortable using. So we're going to switch off that levels and we're going to go into our next adjustment which um, we're going to cover off the hue saturation briefly and um, the reason I'm not going to cover it in detail is because it's typically not one that I use uh, very often for making changes to a color. Um, you know particularly if we, if we go in the master level here and we start changing hues um, you know the image can very quickly start to just go crazy and, and look terrible so we don't want uh, we don't want that. 
If we go into the individual color channels, on the other hand, uh, let's say we go into red and we start modifying things, once again, um, it can be a little bit difficult to achieve the effect that we're looking for. Actually, I'm just going to select blue so that we're working consistently with the blue color here. And as we can see, if we start um, we start playing with these uh, these different uh, you know hue values, it's it's hard to achieve that effect that we were looking for before, where we were sort of you know. Um, adjusting shadows and highlights. So where I will typically use hue saturation is more just on the saturation and lightness sliders. So if I find, for example, that maybe the model's skin tone has a little bit too much red in it, I might go in here and either adjust down uh, the saturation level um, to take a little bit of that redness out. Um, as we can see, the skin starts to go a little bit more pale now. Or we can increase our lightness level, um, which ultimately will achieve kind of the same effect. Um, by once again kind of you know lightening the skin and of course afterwards we can mask out the lips if we don't want that uh, to affect the color of the lips. So that's really the only place where I use hue saturation as far as color adjustment goes. Now I will use it a little bit later in the demonstration to show you um, another cool technique that you can use with it but uh, as far as sort of globally adjusting an image um, usually just the saturation and lightness sliders are all that I will use. So the next thing that we're going to look at is going to be um, the gradient map, which is one that um, most people don't find um, terribly useful and they kind of think of it as uh, being a little bit of a silly tool, but it actually can become quite useful and then you actually get uh, pretty nice results with it if you uh, know how to use it. So basically, uh, let's start off here where we're going to get rid of this default um, filter that we have over here. We're going to just pick this one here as a sort of starting point and we're going to go into our um, our color over here. We're going to select maybe a blue tone, so we're just going to kind of drag down into um, this general space here. So now uh, we see that the image is quite stylized looking and that's probably not what we're going for unless we're going for something really funky. So the next thing we need to do is kind of make this look a little bit more realistic and to do that we can uh, start playing with the different blend modes that we have here. So first one we're going to select is the color blend mode and as we can see that again changes things and they're not looking terribly great. Um, but what we can do is we can start uh, dragging the opacity slider down to sort of a reasonable level maybe around um, uh, you know, 18%, uh, 15 18%. And at this point here, we see that the results are actually starting to look a little bit more realistic and actually not too bad. So once again, you know, with a really simple adjustment here, and we've we've modified the color of our image quite uh, quite a bit. And you know, in this case, it may feel a little bit minor, but again, we've introduced a little bit of that um, that blue color into our shadows and a little bit of the um, yellow slash orange color um, into our uh, into our highlights and that's basically exactly what the gradient map does. Um, anything on the left hand side ends up being mapped into your shadows. Anything on the right hand side ends up going into your highlights and of course anything in the middle uh, maps more along the midtones. So again you can play with some of these different um, blend modes and uh, two other ones that look, work pretty well are soft light which um, will give you a more realistic effect in this case um, very subtle so you can actually drag the opacity on soft light up um, to even 21% and again you know that creates an image that looks fairly realistic and, and fairly nice. Um, and you can also use hard light, um, which will be a lot more intense, but we can just, again, bring that opacity down. And once again, we're left with something that's fairly realistic. So now, um, next thing we're going to look at is uh, a feature that I do use quite often, and that's the selective color adjustment. So here, um, basically what the selective color allows you to do is to go into the individual RGB and CMYK um, channels and adjust sort of the balance of colors within those. So if we go, for example, into our blue, um, once again, let's say we um, we start dragging down our yellow slider, that will once again take our um, our blues and add more yellow into them. So we had a little bit more, we have a little bit of blue in the hair, and we see that that will start to um, uh, increase the blue. And, and basically, what we're doing is we're taking away the yellow. So you know, as as before, um, blue and yellow are opposite. So if we start increasing yellow, obviously we're adding more yellow, and if we decrease yellow, we're going to be adding more blue. Now, if we want to achieve an effect. Um, that was similar to what we had within our curves adjustment, we can start going into these whites, neutrals, and blacks. Uh, and you know, you can sort of think of blacks as the shadows, whites as the highlights. And so if we go into blacks over here and we start dragging yellow down, so again introducing more blue, we see that once again we're um, pumping up the blacks and the shadows here to have a more bluish type of cast. Now um, all these sliders again operate on sort of the same manner. Um, cyan will um, increase uh, red if we go on the negative side. Uh, and of course increase cyan if we go on the positive side. Uh, magenta will um, be uh, green if we go towards the negative and of course add magenta on the positive. 
Now another nice uh, slider over here is actually the black slider and that allows you to achieve a similar effect to what we saw within hue saturation where we, um, for example, wanted to lighten the redness within a skin tone. So if we uh, select our reds here and we find that the model has a little too much red within our skin tone, we can go in here and actually dial down uh, the amount of black which basically just takes some of the redness out. Um, as you can see, we, the effect is kind of similar to what we had uh, within that uh, the, within the lightness and saturation sliders in the hue saturation adjustment. Um, similarly here, we can of course tweak, maybe uh, again predominantly, uh, skin tones are predominantly red, so if we want to adjust uh, the skin tones, we can go into our red color over here and, you know, start modifying the amount of yellow um, within that. Uh, we can start, you know, adding more red if we want, so we can do that just by taking cyan down and that will introduce more red. Similarly, we can increase blacks, which will give us more red within our red. Uh, so it's you know it's a really interesting tool to use um, when you're trying to kind of go into the individual uh, colors and make adjustments on a very uh, specific level. So uh, it's not a tool that I use typically to adjust um, you know highlights, midtones, and shadows. For that, I'll usually use curves or levels. But if there's a particular color that's bothering me within the image, um, selective color is what I'll use to uh, modify that color individually. So now the final adjustment that we'll do is actually not an adjustment layer, it's essentially we're just going to create a brand new layer and what we're going to do is we're going to apply sort of a, um, a color cast uh, within our image. So we've got this, um, this sort of cyan color selected as our starting point. So we're going to use that, we're going to click Option uh, Delete or Alt Delete if you're on a PC and that's going to fill our uh, layer with the foreground color. We're then going to go down and select our color blend mode and now as we can see the image looks just completely blue and not terribly good. But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to focus our adjustment to just the highlights. So maybe we want to just take the highlights and apply this little cyan cast to them. So we're going to add a layer mask to our image and then we're going to use a, a tool that I, uh, or a technique I should say, that I picked up from Aaron Nace over at Flurn, which is just a, a great little um, tool to allow you to sort of concentrate uh, you know, in a particular layer into shadows or highlights, and uh, that's the apply image. So you go to image, apply image, that brings up this box over here. And if we select invert, for example, we see that um, our layer mask is effectively an, an inverted um, image of our current image, um, whereby everything that is a shadow goes through the layer mask, so that's all in white, and anything that is a highlight um, does not go through. So that's not what we want. We actually want to um, block the shadows from coming through and make sure that the highlights go through. So that's what we have right here. We've got um, all of our shadows, which is you know, predominantly the hair um, being masked out within our mask and then uh, the skin and the highlights are going through the mask. So now if we just click OK there, we see that our um, our cyan cast is applied predominantly within our highlights. So now what we can do is um, we can start refining these. If we're not, for example, happy with these colors, uh, first off we're going to probably lower the opacity a little bit because that is just um, too intense. And then let's say we're not happy with this uh, with this starting color here. Maybe we we don't like the cyan. So that's where we can actually bring up our hue saturation adjustment and start making some changes. So we're going to hit Command U. That's going to bring up our hue saturation box. Now just make sure you do have the actual um, color layer selected, not the layer mask. And from here we can actually start modifying the overall color of that particular color cast. So now if we start to move towards this end of things we see that we're once again reintroducing a little bit of a more golden yellow kind of cast just like we had um, within our curves adjustment. So if we're happy with that, next thing we can do is um, let's say we want to restrict this adjustment to just the brightest of the highlights. So that's where we can actually go into our mask now. We're going to hit Command L or Control L if you're on a PC and that's going to allow us to actually refine this mask a little bit more. So if we start to drag our midtones over to the right hand side we see that we are completely narrowing down this mask to just the brightest highlights. So we can you know, drag that essentially all the way over and really just the, the most faint highlights will be shining through. Um, and if we want something in the middle, maybe we'll sort of end up right here. So now um, we've restricted that color cast to a fairly small area, which is essentially this portion um, of our model's face. So if we start to toggle that on and off, we see that essentially we've just added a little bit of warmth um, within the highlights. And in, in that case, um, it happens to be our skin tones. 
So that's you know those are some of the main ways that I tend to adjust um, colors within my image. So we looked at about six different ways, and uh, what I'll typically do is as I kind of work through these, uh, if I find something that I like, I will um, set up a new action. I'll record uh, my settings within that particular um, adjustment, and uh, then I'll just you know kind of work through some of those saved actions every time I'm uh, approaching a new image just to see um, what looks good. And you know oftentimes I'll just take the action as given, and sometimes I'll just you know use that as sort of a reference point and uh, and you know apply it and then tweak the colors from there on so um, quite a bit of information covered there and I hope you found that useful and uh, we'll see you next time